of the first five. Hello, welcome to the Field House here at 100 and Central, the site for tonight's matchup between the 100 and Central Red Devils and the Wachung Hills Warriors, right here on HC TV. I am Dominic Capone, joined by Jim Johnson, and we thank you for joining us. And 100 and Central coming into this one, six and two overall, four and two in the Skyland Conference. The Warriors, four and five, two and four in conference. They've won three straight. And Jim, we have a good matchup here tonight. It is Senior Day for the 100 and Central Red Devils. We do, Don. There will be a lot of emotion here. It's uh, it's the last regular season home game for these girls. A lot of them have been four years in the program, some two-year varsity players. In the case of Mackenzie Laylor, three years in the varsity program. So it's, uh, it's uh, bittersweet. It's exciting for the girls to be part of this. But again, the last home game. I shouldn't say it's their last game in the gym. Mm -hmm. They will have the Skylands Conference tournament next week. So there are at least one more home game, probably more, and we'll get into that later, but certainly there'll be a lot of, of emotion today. This year a little bit different, obviously with COVID and everything, a little precautionary. They will do the ceremony after the game. So be sure to stay tuned for that. As they are announcing the starting five, 400 and Central will look a little bit different today as they will start all seniors tonight. There's Isabel Di Giovanni, senior. She's making her first career start for the Red Devils, so uh, a nice moment. The same with uh, Emmy uh, Nanda, making her first uh, start as a Red Devil. Just wrapping up the starting five for the Red Devils. And that is one name that has become synonymous with this starting five, Mackenzie Laylor. She had 10 points versus the Warriors on February 5th in Central's win against Wa Chung. This is the second time these two are playing. The first time it was Hunter and Central, like I said, getting the win 42-34 at Wa Chung Hills. The Red Devils outscored the Warriors 13-1 in the first quarter. But then the Warriors outscored the Red Devils 17-7 in the third. Jess Mastriano with nine, Mackenzie Laylor to lead the team with 10. One name to look out for on Wachung Hills, Bella Murray. She had 17 points to lead all scorers for Wachung Hills in that matchup against Central. Last game, she put up a stat line, 28 points, 12 rebounds, and four blocks in their win against Sinai Christian yesterday, 79-69. Well, the girls from both teams certainly appreciative of any games they get this year because it's been that kind of year with cancellations on the fly. So, uh, so at least we're, we're underway today. A quick three right off the inbounds. It's an air ball from Morgan Groff. And out of bounds, far sideline. And we'll stay here for the Warriors. For the Warriors, they won their first game of the season, 68-52 over Bridgewater, then lost the next five games, and now they're on a three-game winning streak as that lefty layup can't find the bottom of the net from Kendall Lee, and here comes Central the other way, 30 seconds into the ball game, looking for their first bucket. And then early turnover for the Red Devils. Groff the other way, nice feed down low. Labazo back out, finds the hands of Groff. Floater in the lane, comes up short, and Savannah Grant, the defensive board. We're going to talk about some of the seniors as we go along here. One of them, Isabel G. Giovanni, making her first start as the Red Devil. Isabel's future plan, she's undecided where she's going to go to school. She'll probably uh, wrap it up in the next coming weeks. But she's going to study special ed and Spanish. Savannah Grant doing a great job finding the open cutter. And Emmy Manda on the board first for 100 and Central. They're up 2-0 in the opening minute. 
trying to answer right back on the right baseline is Puglisi. She can't get it to go. Ball in the painted area. Jump ball. And Hunter to Central will get the ball. And you mentioned Emmy Nanda making her first start as a Red Devil, another senior uh, part of the festivities today. Emmy's also undecided where she's going to go, but she's looking to uh, planning to study criminology. She mentions her favorite pregame song is Just Can't Get Enough by the Black Eyed Peas. So congratulations to Emmy Nanda, Hunter and Central senior. Layler bumped, puts it up, can't get it to go, but she'll go to the line to shoot a pair. We're going to have plenty of time to talk about uh, Mackenzie Layler, but uh, mm -hmm. just a, a name that's synonymous with Hunter and Central basketball. Her older sister, Michelle, a four-year member of the girls' team. She graduated in 2017. Mackenzie now a three-year member, so that's a lot of Laylers in the past eight years. Missed on the three there. Offensive rebound goes to Bella Cretelli on the right wing. Amanda is fouled. And that's Bella Murray, the culprit. First foul on her second team foul of the first half. 6.14 on the clock, 2 0, 100 and Central early on in this ball game. So I always hope, Dom, when I watch these senior days, when you get some of the players who don't play that much, mm -hmm. you always like to see them get off to a good start for some longer extended playing time. And uh, let's hope that was, uh, that'll was be the case here. Emmy Nanda scored on the first possession. And Layler straight to the cup, gets it to go for the deuce. Just shows her experience going right around that defense and laying it in. Cross-court pass. She will be one critical loss for Coach Bush uh, heading into next season. 4-0, 100 and Central. They have a chance to increase this lead as Layler brings it across the logo left to right. Dribbles waist high, drifts over to the right wing. Screen to the left by Grant. Up top for Nanda, down low, Grant, she's bumped, and we'll go to the line. Savannah Grant, another Red Devil senior, goes by Savvy, and Savvy will be going to Seton Hall University next year. She's also majoring in criminal justice. Savvy's advice, she never takes anything for granted. She didn't think as a freshman her senior season would be cut so short, for, yeah. so that's uh, really prophetic there. You can't take anything for granted. Good words by Savvy. Grant goes two for two from the line. It's a six nothing ball game in favor of Hunter and Central. Approaching five minutes to go here in the first quarter. That shot by Murray's off to the left and tracked down by Grant at the left block. And here comes Mackenzie Layler. Real nice start here by the Red Devils, both offensively and defensively. Layler up top to Grant in the paint, looking to go to work. Working on Groff, nice feed. Di Giovanni can't get it to go. And a foul. Looks like it'll go against Hunter and Central and Savannah Grant, her first personal, team's first of the half. So funny watching these inbounds passes, Dom, as you see the referees don't touch the ball. It's interesting. The kids just pick it up. Yeah, it's just uh, one of the different nuances this year. Murray can't connect on the three. Right there to clean it up and put it in is Morgan Groff, the 5'8 sophomore guard. Gets the first bucket for Wachung Hills at 6'2. So the Warriors are on the board. Wachung Hills, uh, as I usually mention when I have a game with Wachung Hills, I kind of like that color, those colors of brown and gold. They're not all that popular, yeah. but I kind of like them. Layler, a foot inside the three point line. Too strong on that shot. Ball tipped and taken. Bella Murray the other way. Stops on a dime. Puts it up and puts it in. Bella Murray on the board first. Like I said, 28 points in yesterday's win over Sinai Christian. It's now a 6 4 ball game, under four minutes to play. Red Devils on top. Well, she's the one to watch out for, Bella Murray, that's for sure. That pass is picked off. Ava Labazo the other way. Righty scoop layup. Can't get it to go. Defensive board goes to Isabel Di Giovanni. And a foul is called on the floor. Comes a few substitutions. Sarah Carfagno is into the ball game, along with Lily Testa taking a seat as Emmy Nanda. 
and Isabel Di Giovanni. So the other two seniors of this, uh, seven members of the senior class, the other two are now in the game, of course. Uh, Lily Testa has just had a great season so far for Central. Mm -hmm. Grant up top, directing traffic. Layler now has the ball in her possession. Hangs out at the logo, waiting, waiting for something to evolve. Down low, Layler with the right. No good, kind of an awkward position underneath the basket. She recovers. Second chance opportunity is no good as well. And a foul is called, Hunter and Central. Once again, it's called on them. That's frustration, Don. Boy, it was a nice elusive play by McKenzie getting open underneath the basket. The good follow up, neither one falls, and then the foul goes back the other way. Those are frustrating. Groff tees it up off the heel of the rim. Right there to collect the rebound is Murray. Her shot clanks off the rim, and free throw line jumper from Julia Puglisi is good. And a 6-0 run for Wachung Hills. It's all knotted up at six apiece. 2.45 to go in the first quarter. And that quick start for the Red Devils now is, uh, is quickly erased. Mm -hmm. The Wachung Hills Warriors right back in this thing. Between the circles is Testa. And there's a turnover over the head of Mackenzie Layler. And we'll get a few more substitutions. Savannah Grant and Bella Critelli will take a seat, checking in Lucia Lorto and Anna Hansen. Puglisi, ball over her head, waves off the screen to the right, brings it back out to reset. Crosses it into the corner. And a travel. Another Red Devil senior, uh, Sarah Carfagno, let's talk about for a minute. Mm -hmm. She finds Sarah out there. Or did Sarah just leave the game? She checked out before I could talk. We'll wait till, uh, she, no, no, there she is, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a little tricky, Dom, talking and shooting. We'll get back to that in a minute. Layler's pass, tipped, recovered by Hansen, underneath the basket, and it's taken away by the Warriors. Murray directing traffic, driving inside, brings it back out. Around the back, looking for a teammate, floats it to the near side for Puglisi. Driving inside, and a foul on the floor. Ava Labazo was clipped. It will be on the floor. All right, now we'll mention Sarah a little bit as uh, she's gonna play Division I soccer, Jackson State University. And she's looking to study special education, so a Division I mm -hmm. soccer, that's, uh, that's quite that's very impressive. Cool. Yeah, absolutely cool. So uh, congratulations to Sarah. And Murray I've, straight on three. I have heard these words before, her advice also, make sure you take nothing for granted. Time will move so fast and before you know it, you're a senior. <laughs> Geez, Sarah, wait till you get to be a senior <laughs> citizen like me. <laughs> You're not there yeah. yet. Come on now, Jim. <laughs> Getting pretty gray there, Dom. <laughs> Approaching a minute left in this first quarter. All mounted up at six. Layler inside with the righty scoop. Layup no good. Hanson there to clean it up. And Hunter and Central having some trouble getting points after their 6-0 start to the ball game. Murray at the free throw line is taken by Layler from behind. Carfagno picks it up. And now 50 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. Alorto circles around the perimeter to the right. Hansen back up top for Testa. Murray right on her. Layler now has it. Picks up her dribble and throws it away. Picked off by Gianna Labazo. Coast to coast. Sandwiches it in between the backboard and the rim. And it will stay here for Wachung Hills. Boy, going back to Sarah Carfagno for a second. Jackson State. Jackson State just hired Deion Sanders as the football coach. <laughs> I was just watching or reading about this a couple days ago. They had their... Uh, they had uh, a, a game this time of year, and of course with, with, uh, with COVID, they're playing. I'll let the final seconds tick off, then I'll ramble. <laughs> Five seconds remaining. 
Watchung Hills looking to get their first lead of the ball game. One second, Murray for three, almost banked it in. And at the end of one, 6-6 six, six is the score. 100 and Central started the game on a 6-0 run, and the Warriors answered with a 6-0 run of their own to tie it up. And an eventful first quarter, but so far both teams trying to find their footing uh, on offense. Yeah, a real good start for the Red Devils. You like the first three minutes of this game, 6 nothing, looking strong both offensively and defensively, but the Warriors have indeed settled down. But before I forget that train of thought, <laughs> Deion Sanders at Jackson State, where Sarah's going to go play soccer. I don't know if you read about that, but he's uh, it's quite the... Uh, Imagine quite the him as your head coach. Absolutely, <laughs> and they're, they're calling on the loudspeaker. They were saying, Coach Prime is at the 40-yard line. It was really? just an outrageous read a couple days ago. I now, can't I wait to see video. I wonder if he puts that in his contract where they have to call him Prime. Oh. Deion Sanders, I can't imagine <laughs> that he would do something like that. Dom, yeah. I just I don't believe that. I saw uh, <laughs> Troy Aikman was also at one of the practices yes. the other day. Yeah, as I think well. he shut up for the opener as well. All right, Don, we better get back to uh, get, better get back to <laughs> basketball. Another senior we want to talk about. It's out on the floor right now. Is Lily Testa? We mentioned before, Lily's going to continue on playing basketball career. She's going to play at the University of Rochester next year. Uh, she's undecided major, but she's likely going to be a biology major, major with a minor in math, possibly wow. on the pre-med track. So uh, just a little bit smarter than me. I can, <laughs> just a I little bit. I can hardly say those words. So uh, <laughs> congratulations to Lily on a, a great career at Central. Mentions that Shotgun by George Ezra is wow. her favorite tune to warm up to. 30 seconds into the second quarter. Hunter and Central with the ball. Again, looking for a bucket. They haven't scored in three plus minutes of game time. Carfagno, corner three, in and out. Right there to clean it up is Alorto. Too strong. And another offensive rebound, as this time it's Lily Testa. Backing down Murray, up with the left. Great defense by Bella Murray. And the Warriors come away with the ball. And they'll take it the other way. Definitely a little bit of an offensive lull here for the Red Devils. That three is too strong from Kendall Lee. And the Red Devils will once again try to take the lead. Layler into the corner for Carfagno, circles around. Hanson looking to set a pick. Layler works at baseline. And a foul on the floor is called. It's going to be the fourth team foul for Wachung Hills. A couple substitutions. Tabby DeVries into the ball game for Anna Hansen for the Red Devils. And DeVries has put in some real solid minutes as just a sophomore. So uh, bright days are ahead for Tabby DeVries. Labazo at the left block. It was taken by Layler once again, getting another steal from behind. Mackenzie Layler goes by Mack, and uh, she is most likely going to go to the University of Maryland to study business. And her favorite memory was beating Pope John last year, and the whole team running over to Mr. B. Lucio Lorto gives Hunter and Central a two-point lead. It's 8-6. Under six minutes to play here in the first half. Puglisi drives towards her left, up. Great defense by Hunter and Central, but it's taken right back by Groff, and her jumper's pure. Morgan Groff ties it up once again at eight. Yesterday, Morgan Groff had 16 points, 10 rebounds, three assists for the Warriors. Layler, corner triple, book it. Mackenzie Layler from downtown. Book it, Dano. Love it, Dom. That's a good one. Book it. 11-8 the score, approaching five minutes to play here in the first half. That floater is great by Morgan Groff. What a nifty lay-in from Groff. And now both of these teams starting to find their offensive footing. It's 11-10 now, exactly five minutes to play, and a timeout is taken by Hunter and Central. Looks to be a full timeout. 
like I said, both offenses getting into it a little bit and the jumpers falling. Yeah, it looks like this one's going to probably be a good back and forth game. Um, Red Devils uh, finish up their regular season on the road. Dom, they have a game Thursday night against unbeaten Gill St. Bernard's. Gill beat them in the opener here as we uh, reflect back uh, three or four weeks ago. It's been such a short season. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a real big one. And then they finish the regular season at Hillsborough on Saturday. And for those out there listening, no parents are allowed, no spectators in Hillsborough. So I guess the Hillsborough School District is, uh, you know, their restrictions are a little bit uh, more stringent. But I think the spectators are allowed at Gill. But uh, as I see it, no spectators for Saturday's game at Hillsborough. Mm -hmm. And then next week, uh, I did not hear if the seating has come out yet for the Skylands Conference Tournament. But I know all teams are guaranteed three games, win or lose. So if you win, obviously you'd advance. Losers would go into a uh, loser's bracket. So still a lot of basketball will have to be played. Yeah, a lot to look forward to for Hunter and Central. This is definitely not their last game, especially for the seniors as well. DeVries down low, works towards her left, shoots with the right. And she'll go to the charity stripe for two. And then, Don, the interesting thing is, you know, we've mentioned before about the seasons. We're going to move right into season three, right when basketball's done. So it'll be wrestling and uh, girls' volleyball and gymnastics. So one thing will lead right into the other. We'll have a lot of action for you here on HCTV live stream. Always busy here at HCTV. DeVries. Can't get any from the line. Out of bounds, Warriors will take over. Don, you're gonna be available to announce the gymnastics for us. I have to learn gymnastics yeah, first. Yeah, I wanna <laughs> see, uh, see how you can do on that. They have four stations, I do remember that. And uh, we'll have plenty of time to brush up on that stuff. Plenty. Kendall Lee, left baseline, just lost it out of bounds. A turnover for Wachung Hill. Ava Labazo will check back in, taking a seat. Lily Coleman. Layla taking her time. Hands it off to Alorto. Up top for Testa. Starts her dribble towards the left. Hand off Carfagno. Four minutes to play here in the first half. 11 10, 100 in Central. Alorto, nowhere close on that one. She thought she was fouled. The other way, Murray, a two pointer. She's been struggling a little bit here in this one. Bella Murray is. She only has two points in the game. Hard to keep putting up the numbers that she's been putting up, that's for sure. Layler starts her drive. In the paint with the left, Nifty lay in. Nice, strong move by McKenzie, taking that one to the rack. Red Devils back up by three. 13 10 the score. Like Jim said, 100 and Central out in front. Murray, right elbow jumper off the backboard, and she just can't find her rhythm here in this first half. So good, Dom, just to hear people in the gym, isn't it? I mean, it's been a week and a half now that the parents have been back in, and only parents can be at the games. But boy, it's a lot better than just when it's dead quiet, and it's just you and me talking. That lay-in finds the bottom of the net as Sarah Carfagno in a five-point lead for 100 and Central. Like you mentioned, hearing the fans actually cheer when someone scores, it's very refreshing. It makes all the difference in the world. It does give some atmosphere. It's not what it, the games normally might be with a lot of people in the stands, but it's a heck of a lot better than the alternative. Morgan Groff in the paint, kicks it back out. Puglisi, a triple is good. Nice rip there by Puglisi, and suddenly we are back to a two-point game. Bella Cretelli. Set to check back in for 100 and Central. At the next dead ball, DeVries inside with her left off the glass. Tabby DeVries using her length down low. Tabby DeVries Central out has had a very, uh, sorry, Dom, a very impressive sophomore year. She's gotten some quality minutes, has looked really good. And a, again, a lot of bright things ahead for Tabby DeVries. 
getting some minutes off the bench. And for a young player, that's always good as she now has two more years here at Hunter and Central to really show what she can do. And now the captain, Bella Critelli, comes back in the game. So boy, out. Bella has a lot of advice here. I don't know if I can go through all this. <laughs> we might have some time to, to get to before uh, when the game ends. So we'll get to it. Tabby DeVries once again, offensive rebound and the lay-in. The Red Devils match their largest lead of the game at six, 19-13. Under a minute 30 to play here in the first half. And Hunter Central looking to Start getting their offense clicking a little bit more, which they're doing in the second quarter, and look to extend that lead. They are, and I'm starting to talk a little bit about uh, Bella, and I didn't want to rain in that parade because she's got some very solid advice in here. But I do you want to say that her future plans are to go to Seton Hall University? So we've got a couple girls who will be pirates uh, at uh, SHU next year, um, and then she's looking to uh, take up physical therapy. And all right, her favorite pregame song. Now we're talking, Don. Now, <laughs> now I'm here. It Ain't No Mountain High Enough by Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell. Wow. That's, that's old school right there. Boy, I'm giving Bella some props for that. That's, uh, that's good. That's into, my that's into my generation. <laughs> if I had only known that, Dom, all year. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Murray hands it off to Labazo. Up top for Groff. That's a good shot, that's a two-pointer. Just inside the three-point line, but Groff once again splashes home a jumper. Showing a light press are the Warriors. Bounce pass, DeVries, short jumper off the mark, and it's rebounded by Bella Murray of the Warriors. Stops on a dime, up top. Groff tries again. Back iron too strong. And just ripping the board away is Bella Critelli. Jump ball is the call. And That's Hunter it, Central Bella. Will That's get possession. it, Bella. Ain't no mountain high enough, girl. Way <laughs> to grab that one. I love it. I promise you, Don, I'm not going to sing, though. Just because I like it. We won't get that carried away. You can if you want to. <laughs> Good way to get zero watchers on our stream. <laughs> Everyone just click off yeah, right away. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Under a minute, 19-15 the score. 100 and Central out in front by four. Carly Algor into the ball game, along with Julia Puglisi. Groff drives baseline, and nowhere to go. Great defense by Lily Testa on the help. Out of bounds, 42.6 on the clock. Murray inside amongst the trees, hit hard, falls to the ground, and she was hacked. Yeah, the Warriors are hanging right around in this game. I don't know that they've had the lead yet. I don't think so. But it's been, uh, it's been fairly close. Every time Central seems to go up a few points, Watch Young Hills comes right back. Hunter and Central, their last three games, won 31-9 at Bridgewater on February 16th. Bridgewater, highest scoring quarter was four points in the third. Ouch. <laughs> Great Ouch. defense by Hunter and Central on that showing. Safe to say, if you took the under, you hit. And they lost at Franklin. 55-49, but came back with a W, 39-23 versus IMAC on February 20th. Six and two overall record. And remember the Warriors on a three game winning streak after losing five in a row. 20 seconds, Carfagno into the corner for Testa. Hunter and Central may look to get the last shot. But a turnover says otherwise. Under 10. Down low, right block, Labazo blocked and taken by Testa. And that will end the first half. Very close game, 19-17, 100 and Central on 
top. And like you said, Hunter is central with opportunities to increase that lead. The most they got it to was six in the first quarter and the second. As they go to the half to try to readjust and try to capitalize on this two-point lead that they have. Yeah, each time I think the Red Devils are ready to kind of make a little move and put some separation between the two clubs. Watch on Hills comes right back with a couple of buckets. And sure enough, we've got a two-point game and a, and a decently played first half. 1917 once again as we go into break. Hunter and Central on top. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the second half. Back here for the second half here at the field house at Hunter and Central. The Hunter and Central Red Devils lead it 1917 over the Wachung Hills Warriors. Once again, I am Dominic Pone, Jim Johnson alongside me. We thank you for joining us this Tuesday evening, senior day for Hunter and Central. Once again, they will be doing the ceremony after the game, so be sure to stay tuned for that. They had all five seniors start the game. And Mackenzie Laylor, Bella Cretelli, Isabel Di Giovanni, Emmy Nanda, and Savannah Grant. So far for Hunter and Central, Mackenzie Laylor leading the way with seven points. And Morgan Groff with eight points for Wachung Hills. Groff was uh, hot early on, in fact. I think she made her first four shots, but cooled off a little bit since. Nineteen seventeen. the score once again. Wachung Hills has the ball to open it up. Oh, what a swat by Anna Hansen rejecting Julia Puglisi. She wasn't even going to get let her get a shot off on that one. Anna Hansen, a junior, so uh, again, a lot of with seven seniors on the team, there's going to be a lot of girls leaving, but uh, mm -hmm. Anna will be one of the stalwarts next year. Puglisi hanging out at the right wing. Testa on her. Labazo now has it, tees up a three, and can't get the bounce, almost went in. Skying in for the defensive board is Sarah Carfagno for 100 and Central. And an early foul, 30 seconds into the third quarter. First team foul on Watch on Hills. Let's see if the Warriors, or the uh, Red Devils can get some offense going here and maybe uh, put a little difference between them and Watch on Hills. Layler scanning the floor. Right on her is Kendall Lee of the Warriors. Kicks it to Alorto. Back up top for Carfagno. Wide open in the corner. Layler, a triple. Too strong. Alorto, the offensive board. And it's tipped. And Carfagno regains the possession for Hunter and Central. Layler drives in. Strong up to the glass. No good. Anna Hansen, another rebound. Lefty layup. Can't find the home. 19-17, over a minute into this third quarter, 100 Central on top. Just not falling in that possession. A couple of real good shots, close-up shots, no good. Groff now in double digits. She has 10, and this ball game is all knotted up at 19 apiece. Groff seems to be playing with such fluidity. Her jump shot, nothing but net, and she's working inside as well, and getting those easy lay-ins. She's had a real nice game, that's for sure. Hunter to Central has the largest lead of the game at six. They got it twice, 6-0 run to open up the ball game in the first. And then they were up by six in the second quarter as well. Hansen, step inside the free throw line, back out Alorto, off to the left on the triple. And a defensive board for Bella Murray. Murray looks to go to work in the lane with the left, can't get the roll. Offensive board for Kendall Lee. Bella Murray, four points in this contest. Remember, 28 points yesterday against Sinai Christian. Reverse layup underneath. What a shot. As soon as I say that, Bella Murray gets her sixth point, and Wachung Hills gets their first lead of the ball game, 21 19. It's as if she's plugged into the broadcast, Dom, and listening carefully. Hunter and Central trying to answer. Alorto right in front of her own bench. Bounces it for Layler. Free throw line, Hanson. Carfagno outside. Layler's shot is blocked by Ava Labazo. Alorto with the right, no good. Morgan Groff the board. Five minutes to play here in the third. Groff steps into it. 
No good on that shot. Planks off the backboard in the rim. An offensive board for Bella, sorry, Lily Testa. Still no points for the Red Devils, and we're three plus minutes in to this second half. Testa back to the basket, finds Carfagno on the weak side. Nice zip pass right back to Testa, who puts it in with the J. Back to a tie ball game, 21-21, 4.30 to play here in the third quarter. Great defense by Laylor denying the pass. Crosses it over Puglisi. Screen to the right from Labaza. Lee starts her drive. Lefty floater no good, fighting for the rebound. And a jump ball, Hunter and Central will take over. Tabby DeVries will tag in for Anna Hansen. Ball picked off, Puglisi the other way. Left block, layup is good. Straight to the cup for the deuce. 23-21 the score. The Warriors with the lead over the Red Devils. Alorto. Ball tipped for a second by Murray, but Alorto gets the ball right back. And once again, Alorto's pass is tipped. Layler, free throw line, in and out. Track down, left baseline by Wachung Hills, Kendall Lee. Murray, contact, foul, will go to the line to shoot two. The Warriors now kind of taking over a little bit here, Dom. It's things, the momentum has definitely swung toward Wachung Hills at this point. They've outscored Central six to two in what's been a low scoring third quarter. That free throw is off the mark. It definitely seems like they're ramping up this offense and on defense they're closing off the passing lanes they switch to a little bit of a zone playing well against central so far in this third quarter murray one for two from the line and murray, six, one and two. It's largest lead of the ball game for the warriors it's a three-point game 24 21 320 on the third quarter clock light press shown by the warriors and Hunter and Central breaks it. That ball's tipped. Setting up a jumper is Lily Testa. It's a one point ball game, under three minutes to play here in the third. Lily Testa providing the uh, what little offense Central's had in this quarter, a couple of nice shots. Poglisi off to the right on the three. Out of bounds, last touched by Tabby DeVries of Hunter and Central. In fact, Lily's been the whole offense for Central in this game, in this uh, third quarter. Labazo thought about a three, closing out quickly was Testa. Murray now has it, Layler on her. Starts her drive around the back. Works it back out. Labazo at three, too short. And DeVries on the floor trying to get it, but a foul is called. Carly Algor with the offensive rebound. <laughs> Labazo will trigger the inbounds. Ball over her head. Quickly finds Morgan Groff. That was Just a looking force. for a foul call. Nothing uh, there, though. Yep, that was a force. Layler across the 100 and central midcourt logo. DeVries, right block. Carfagno in the corner. Back out, Testa, a three, they need it. No good, off to the right. Under two minutes to play here in the third. Warriors up by one. With the ball. Labazo around the Murray screen. Wide open, here's Puglisi, a triple. Why not? Puglisi's not afraid to shoot it, and she's been knocking some shots down, especially in this third quarter. Four-point lead now for Watching Hill. Puglisi wide open there on the wing, and sure enough, that uh, cost the Red Devils. 
timeout, Hunter and Central with a minute 33 on that third quarter clock, 27-23. At one point this season, Wachung Hills was really struggling, lost five in a row, but they've turned it around. They've won three straight games, February 17th versus Bridgewater, 44-35, then at Ridge, 50-37, and then like we mentioned yesterday against Sinai Christian, a 10-point lead. They put up 79 points in that ball game. So this team has completely turned it around from that five-game losing streak to this three-game winning streak, and they're playing well. And right now they're beating a really good 6-200 and in Central team. Yep, the Red Devils have uh, been playing real well down the stretch. Uh, after that opening loss to Gill, they won six of their past seven, and the only loss was losing to uh, what is usually a perennial powerhouse in Franklin. They lost a road game, a close one last Thursday night. So it's been uh, it's been a good season, albeit short season for the Red Devils. But uh, I guess there's a lot of relief at some at, at some stage for these teams that they've been able to get most of their games in. I think Central's had a couple of it that have been canceled. Um, I want to say that there had been two games that had been canceled for Central, and then they added a game along the way, but it's been that kind of a year. You, you're grateful for whatever you, whatever games you're able to get in. Of course. Hunter Central, Mackenzie Laylor trying to orchestrate a comeback with 90 seconds remaining here in this third quarter. 27-23, the Warriors on top. Carfagno, ball over her head right in front of her own bench. Laylor in the far corner. To Testa, one dribble back out to Laylor. And they reset with Carfagno at the top. Testa, towards her left, is bumped. She doesn't need the foul, she puts it in for two instead. Lily's been all the offense for the Red Devils in this third quarter, all six points for Central. That jump shot is blocked by Tabby DeVries, as it was Carly Algor with the shot. 27-25, and Central has a chance to tie it or take a lead with a three. 45 seconds remain in the quarter. Layla up top, free throw line. Testa turns, shoots, gets the roll. Lily Testa ties it up at 27 apiece, and it's a 4-0 run for 100 and Central since that timeout. No question, it's been all Lily, so uh, get her the ball. Murray straight on three. Once again, so close, but couldn't get it to go. 15 seconds to remain in the third quarter. Carfagno dribbles between two defenders. Alorto, left corner, back up to Testa. Down low, DeVries turns quickly, gets the roll for two. 6-0 run, 29-27. And that is the end of the third quarter. And just like that, a flip of the switch, and 100 Central now has a lead going into the fourth quarter. Boy, just talk about a key stretch when the Red Devils really needed it. Uh, Lily Tester providing it once again. And then a nice bucket there by Abby DeVries, in the, excuse me, Tabby DeVries in the, in the final seconds for Central. So Red Devils are right back to where they started at the beginning of this quarter. Two-point lead and uh, just eight minutes to play. Now I wonder what Coach Jamie Bush is going over with Hunter Central right now. Like we said, with a minute 33 down by four in that third quarter, she calls a timeout, goes over some situational stuff, maybe some adjustments, and they blink and they're up by two now with whatever a 6-0 she, run. Whatever she said definitely worked, <laughs> that's for sure. Once again, I am Dominic Bone, Jim Johnson alongside me. Thank you for joining us here on HCTV. And don't forget, at the end of this quarter, it's the senior day ceremony for 100 and Central, and obviously they would like to do that after a win against Wachung Hills. Yep, the flowers are here, Dom. I saw the flower people bring them in, so it's gonna be a nice uh, nice uh, senior night send off for the girls after the game, so please stay tuned. Bella Murray, once again off on the triple. Tabby DeVries, the rebound. Frustrating shooting performance from Bella Murray. But even with her struggles, her team still only down by two. Carfagno steps into a jump shot, two-pointer, no good. Offensive rebound, Testa straight on. She's short, and a defensive board is tracked down by Gianna Labazo. Right elbow jumper. All Ren and a defensive board for Lily Testa. And now the Warriors are in a bit of a offensive slump here. They just can't buy a shot. 
Garfagno, bounce pass, great feed from DeVries. The layup is good. Lily Testa. Great passing by Hunter and Central, leading to that two-pointer. Under seven minutes to play here in the fourth. It's a four-point lead for Hunter and Central, 8-0 run. Oh, what a shot. Morgan Groff has been hitting difficult shots all game long, and she hits another one right there. She's definitely been a key to the Warriors' offense in this one. Brings them right back. It's a two-point game. And Testa traveled. I think she was thinking about dribbling, shooting, and maybe passing to Tabby DeVries on the baseline. Uh, a, a turnover for Hunter Central. Rare mistake for Lily Testa this quarter. She has been on fire. Ava Labazo picks up her dribble. Nice feed down low to Murray, cutting baseline. And a foul on the floor, and Coach Bush is not happy with the call. And that's still just the third foul on Central, so neither team is close to any bonus. Just one team foul on Watch on Hills. And off the inbounds, it's stolen by Carfagno. Jump ball is the call. Will stay with Hunter and Central, but now the arrow goes back to Watch Young Hills when Hunter and Central just thought they had possession and there might have been a foul. Yeah, I don't know about that one, Dom. It's the first time uh, questioning the call there. It looked like it was a, a central possession, if not a foul, on the Warriors. Alorto drives in. Layler up top. Carfagno back up to Layler. Testa. Pass to DeVries off her fingertips and tracked down in the corner. Great job getting out of there as Ava Labazo finding her teammate, Morgan Groff. Down low, left block. That layup is, might have been tipped by Testa. Julia Puglisi, another jump ball, and this is where the jump ball comes into effect. We'll stay here for Watch on Hills. Yeah, that's where you hate to lose that, uh, that, that jump ball. So that ball to the possession. It stays right down there. Timeout. 100 and Central, 30 second timeout. 31 29, 100 and Central in front, 5.55 remaining here in the fourth quarter. And coming down the stretch, Jim, what does 100 and Central have to do to close this one out? How about this one, Dom? They need to make a few shots and hold watch on Hills to not make it some baskets. See, I figured that one out really simple. <laughs> Realistically, this game has been close the whole way, right? I, don't, I think Central had a six point lead mm -hmm. early on and it hadn't been back to that high, and Watch on Hills led by as many as four. Yeah. So this game has been pretty close the whole time, and no reason to think that it's uh, not going to stay this way. But yes, go with that. They need to, we need to score a little bit more. They need to, they need to not score. It'll go well for the great players. analysis yeah. from Jim Johnson. Thirty-one twenty-nine to score, 100 is central out in front of Wachung Hills, 5.55 on the clock. Fourth quarter, Layler stole the ball but runs right out of bounds. Great anticipation on defense, picking that one off. Nice hustle there by McKenzie, but at this point I'd expect nothing less. Groff step back, air balls that one, right into the arms of Lucia Lorto. Layler to Carfagno, breaks timeline. DeVries in the corner, and they'll reset up top. Hot potato pass between Carfagno and Layler, trying to get something going. Testa just turns around, shoots it. Short, Alorto right there. Layup is good. Lucia Lorto, a defensive board, offensive rebound, and then a layup. Doing it all on both sides of the floor. Just about to say, Lucia Lorto getting some real quality minutes. Mm -hmm. She's just a junior again. That's gonna, she'll be one of the key players next year. And uh, giving some solid minutes tonight for Central. Four point lead for Hunter and Central. Under five minutes to play here in the fourth. Might have been a travel. That shot is tipped by DeVries, using her length once again, blocking Julia Puglisi. And that makes sense, tallest player on the court getting a few blocks. Yep. <laughs> uh, she's, had a, she's had a nice season, uh, Tabby DeVries, in the minutes she's got. Tested bounce pass to Layler between the circles. 
Hunter Central has been basically running the same offense, running with Testa at the free throw line. And she could either turn around and shoot or pass it down to DeVries. This time she passes to Carfagno. Her three. Off the back of the rim, over the backboard, and out of bounds. There's been a fair amount of patience by the central offense at this point. Do like that, but it hasn't been any uh, rush shots. You've got the four-point lead. Certainly a lot of time left, so you're not going to go into any sort of a uh, uh, stall. Mm -hmm. But they've been patient and taking good shots. Approaching four minutes remaining here in this fourth quarter, a four-point lead for 100 and Central. That three by Murray is off the mark, and another rebound for Tabby DeVries and 100 and Central. Laylor. In the lane, what a move, just couldn't get it to go home. Murray spins in the lane, what a move, just couldn't finish. That one kind of hurts, you know, mm -hmm. if you watch on heels. Nice move there by Murray, nice spin, and just doesn't fall. And now all of a sudden we've got less than three and a half minutes to go. Hunter and Central trying to extend that lead once again to six points. This could be worth noting too, Don Watch on Hill's just one team foul, so nowhere near time where they would be shooting. Alorto to the rack hard. DeVries just steals it, and the reverse layup is good. Tabby DeVries getting some significant minutes in this second half as she shows up once again. Just a great game by Tabby DeVries, no doubt about it. That's a big loop. This equals the largest lead of the game. 35 to 29, six point lead. Under three minutes to play here in the fourth. Watching Hill is trying to answer, and Kendall Lee was bumped. She'll go to the line to shoot a pair. And if you're watching Hills, this is where you want to start getting back into the ball game, creating some contact, maybe getting to the line and getting points when the clock stops. They've got to keep some chances defensively, Watching Hills. Again, there's only one team foul here. If we get to the final minute, they're going to have to foul. foul yeah, of foul, course. Foul. So this is where you can get aggressive. If you commit a foul, no big deal. You're nowhere near the going over the limit. One for two from the line. DeVries just rips down the board. Testa up top. DeVries screen. To the left, pick and roll, DeVries works to perfection. Tabby DeVries once again puts it in. Largest lead of the game, 37-30, 100 and Central, 227, stamped on that fourth quarter clock. And the crowd is definitely getting into it here on Senior Day. Yeah, here on Senior Day, and it's a sophomore that's had the big fourth quarter for Central. Tabby DeVries, wow. We're, we can't throw enough superlatives. We've got to get out your adjective sheet, uh, oh, yeah. Dom. Dom's got a famous uh, <laughs> adjective sheet. We're going to need him for Tabby DeVries. She's had that kind of game. They're getting a little redundant now. 100%. And 110%. Oh, that's a cliche sheet. Sorry. That's your, that's I, your I, I thing. That's a cliche sheet, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sports cliche sheet. You type it out before each game, and you bring it to work. 37, 30, 100 and central on top. Once again, remember to stay after the game. No be the senior day presentation for the 100 and Central girls basketball team. Seven seniors will be honored. And don't forget, we will also uh, bring up a couple of uh, the Red Devils players at the end of the game for our, uh, for our post game show between. So you'll wanna stick around and listen to that. Jung Hills looking for answers down by seven. 2.20 on the fourth quarter clock. Hunter and Central with the lead. Murray up top. Drives inside. Gabby DeVries once again gets the tip, dives on the floor, and gets the defensive board. And a turnover. Under two minutes to play. That's a turnover the Warriors had to have, too. <laughs> Testa, quick hands on defense, jump ball, 100 and central ball. Yeah. 
Carfagno crosses timeline. Goes right around her defender, Groff. And out of bounds, last touch by Central. 143 on the fourth quarter clock. And once again, the Warriors looking for a bucket. Anything will do. And now that one team foul is starting to look like it could work against Watch on Hills. That happens sometimes. They're going to have to foul frequently. Drives the lane. Tipped from behind by Testa. DeVries. Jump ball will stay here for Wachung Hills. This kind of has a feel of a must score possession for Wachung Hills. And timeout called by Wachung Hills just as the five second counter was getting close. 37 30, timeout Wachung Hills. And great defensive effort by Hunter and Central. We could talk about their offense all day long, but their defensive effort here in the fourth, you can make the case has really propelled them to the seven point lead. No question, it was 27 23 watch on Hills. Not going well for the Red Devils at that point. And boy, it makes it a 14 3 run since then. Boy, I was counting there, Dom. I was up to 4.65 seconds to watch on Hills call their timeout. So <laughs> they just got it in. Okay. You have your you have your stopwatch. St no, it's all in my head. <laughs> it's all in stopwatch in my head. Maybe we'll go back, review the tape, and see how close you really yeah, came. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to do that tonight. It's all part of being a little robotic. That's right. Layup off the inbounds is good. Morgan Groff once again. She's been the answer for Wachung Hills. It's a five-point game. Got to be aggressive. Got to go for steals if you can hit the foul. No big deal. And that's just the second team foul on Wachung Hills. 114 on the fourth quarter clock. Nice defense by Murray. It was tipped, but out of bounds on her. Alorto to inbound. Up top to Vries, catch. The layup, no, off the top of the backboard. Murray spins in the lane. She just can't get it to go. There's been a lid on the bucket for her. Frustrating for Murray, because she's taken some good shots. She's had, you know, she's had her athleticism go on. The shots are just on falling. Couple ticks over a minute remaining here in the fourth quarter. It's a five point lead for Central, they have the ball. Wachuk has to show some pressure. Got a foul. They still, oh, oh, they got a steal. Groff is fouled. No shot is the call. It's on the floor. So great defense by Morgan Groff getting the steal. I thought she was going up in uh, shooting motion, but they're saying on the floor. So that's a little bit of a break for the Red Devils as they are still not over the limit either. Quickly off the inbounds. And once again, Morgan Groff, it's a three point game now. 4 0 run by Wachung Hills. Timeout called by head coach Jamie Bush. 43.6 on the clock, a three-point game. And about a minute ago, you'd think Hunter and Central could try to start running some time off the clock, but a couple turnovers. And Wachung Hills is right back into the ballgame. They really are. It's been a couple of nice defensive possessions, turnovers, uh, baskets. So a three-point game down in the game with just three fouls. Wachung Hills has to be aggressive defensively as they've been. Maybe you get the turnover. If you don't, the foul will be deal. They still have three full fouls to give. Mm -hmm. But again, time could weigh into that. So, uh, so they got to act quick. But this uh, Central's kind of succumb to the pressure a little bit here in the final lineup. Both teams breaking their huddles. Like I said, 43.6 on the fourth quarter clock. Hunter to Central with the ball and a three-point lead. Only three team fouls for Wachung Hills. So they got to start fouling. Carfagno to inbound. Gets it to Layler. Bounce pass Alorto. She brings it back out smartly. And there is the fourth team foul for Wachung Hills. So we still have 37 seconds left, and they still have to foul the Red Devils now three times. 
But again, go for the steal if you're watching Hills. Backcourt violation, a turnover for Hunter and Central. Great trap by Wachung Hills. And now with 35 and 6 10 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter, they have a chance to tie it up with a three. Stunning comeback here for the Warriors. This has really been impressive. In the lane, oh, no call. Shot missed by Ava Labazo and a foul on the floor. A lot of people were chanting for a walk, but no call. Hunter to Central will get the ball regardless. Just 24 seconds left now, Dom. Still one foul to give for Wachong Hills. And an, almost another turnover. Laylor dives on the ball. Timeout. Hunter to Central. Very sloppy offense by Hunter to Central in the last minute or so. And they're not helping themselves in any way. And that was a smart timeout right there because uh, McKenzie was in trouble on the ground. So uh, timeout. So... Game reset here, Dom, three-point lead for the Red Devils. Still only five team fouls for both teams, so nobody's in the bonus just yet. So Central's uh, has succumbed to that pressure a bit. Watch on Hills certainly will go for that steal. If they don't get it, they're gonna foul and try again. But at this point, that uh, that pressure's really been working for Watch on Hills the last minute and a half. And even though for Watch on, there have been some players struggling from the field, they can shoot. Bella Murray can shoot the ball. Puglisi can shoot, and of course, the girls have been doing it all game, Morgan Groff as well. She's had the last two buckets for Wachung Hills to get them back into it. It's a three-point ball game. We shouldn't be surprised that this game has uh, come right down to this. I thought when the Red Devils went up seven with their biggest lead that maybe things were looking pretty good, but uh, the, Warriors, uh, the Warriors are here to play too, and they've uh, played real strong the last couple minutes. 18.4 seconds left in the fourth quarter. 18.4 on the fourth quarter clock. Three point lead for Hunter and Central, and they have the ball. Lorto gets it into Layler. Back to Alorto. Got a foul. And almost a turnover. Got a foul. Out of bounds. Ooh. And it'll go to Watchung Hills. <laughs> Watchung Hills is making that decision whether to foul or to yeah. go for the turnover, and they've been going for the turnover, and it, it has been working. 10 seconds on the clock, down by three. A bit of a gamble when you get down to 13, 12. I'm thinking you got a foul fast. You still have one to give, but it all worked out. So, uh, so now let's see what uh, the Warriors draw up offensively with 10 seconds left, three-point game. I'm of the mindset, Dom, I love to, to foul and put them at the line, don't mm -hmm. let them get a three-point shot. And here, and I'm sure the coaches are talking about this now, the Red Devils still have a foul to give. Yes. So they got that foul to give. They better darn well make sure they do it. And uh, that would kind of knock a couple more seconds off the clock. If we get down to five seconds or so, I'd rather put the, the team at the line, especially for a one and one, and not risk giving up a three. The situation has to be right, and you got to make sure that that, that uh, person is not 100%, in shooting position. Yeah. Definitely don't want them shooting because if that's the case and it's behind the three-point line, they can put it in, get the foul, and go to the line for a chance to take the lead. So let's see where they use this foul, as I'm sure they will. They've got one to use. The officials going over a few things with the scorer's table. Just going over some timeout situations. I did hear Watch on Hills has a 30 second timeout left. That might be it. I'm not sure if they have any more 60s. 10.5 on the fourth quarter clock. Hunter is central, up by three. Watch on looking for the tie. Got a foul. Murray up top. Groff, a triple. Off to the right, no good. Track down, and Hunter is central. Hangs on for the victory. It was a close one. But they end up doing it on senior day. 37, 34, the final. 100 and Central comes out victorious. Well, everything we were just talking about, Dom, didn't necessarily happen. The Red Devils 
chose not to foul. Honestly, they got a little bit of an open look, but it was not a very good shot, the three-pointer. So it all worked out well for the Red Devils on senior night. Nothing, uh, nothing better than getting that last win. And credit to this Wachong Hills team for just battling tough when they went down by seven. They hung right in there, played some great defense. But we're going to have some. We got a trio of girls coming up here, Dom. So I'm going to. We're going to go. We're going to go one at a time. We're going to start off with. We're going to go one at a time. We'll start off with <laughs> Lily. We'll go Lily, then Mackenzie, and then uh, Tabby. And why don't you come a little closer, Lily? And hang on just a second. So we are now joined by 300 essential red devils, Lily Tessa, Tabby DeVries, and of course, Mackenzie Laylor. Uh, I guess, Lily, we'll start with you. You guys were up by six in the first, up by six in the second quarter, and the fourth quarter got a little scary there for a second, coming out with a victory. How'd you guys get it? I think coming out of halftime, they sort of played to our strengths when they switched to zone instead of man. So I think we were able to just sort of get in our comfort zone there, um, and it like carried through the whole rest of the game. We were able to sort of get up and then keep our composure, getting back to the last few minutes, and we just sort of were working together and moving the ball well for the game. And I'll go over to Tabby now. You were dominant on both sides of the floor, grabbing rebounds, cleaning up on the offensive glass, and uh, getting some shots to go. How does it feel to help your team? It feels really good knowing that I'm an underclassman, um, doing some of the things that I can do without the help of my upperclassmen friends and all the assists that they get. And I just think that we work really well as a team. And Mackenzie, last question for you. You're a senior on the squad. You got to start with a few of your fellow seniors and getting the win on senior day. How's that feel for you? Honestly, awesome. It's such a good feeling. Um, and I probably would have been devastated if we lost on senior night, if I'm going to be honest. So this was an important game for us, and we pulled through. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations. Thank you. Again, that was Lily Testo, Tabby DeVries, and Mackenzie Laylor. All three of them propelled Hunter to Central for this win over Wachung Hills, 37-34. And Jim, like I mentioned, all three of them doing a little bit of everything for this team. And Mackenzie Laylor, a senior for this Hunter and Central squad, getting a W on Senior Day must have been a great feeling for her. As that's the second time we got to talk to her, player of the game. Uh, for all three of them, we'll give it to all three of them because they played very, very well. Yeah, you know, typically on a senior day, we want to make the senior, uh, senior laden and, and tribute to the all the Red Devils girls, but it was kind of hard to ignore Tabby DeVries the way she played in the fourth quarter, yeah. and uh, it's good to see a little bit of the the future of Hundred and Central girls basketball because with seven graduating uh, players, uh, there's going to be. They're going to need big minutes from uh, Anna Hansen and Tabby DeVries and Lucia Lordo. So it's, uh, you know, it's great to see mm -hmm. her, uh, both Tabby and Lucia Lordo, play some big minutes down the stretch for Central. And once again, the parents getting ready with their flowers. The players will come out for a senior day presentation. So stay tuned for that. As many times as you, you know, we watch the senior days here at Hunterdon and Central and, and elsewhere, it's always a special moment for the parents, really, uh, for the kids and for the parents. And in some cases, I know like uh, Mackenzie Laylor's parents, we mentioned before, they, uh, Mackenzie's older sister, Michelle, was a four-year player here at Hunterdon Central, then Mackenzie at three. So this is the end of the line. A lot of these parents of have put a lot of time in uh, – and watching their daughters play through the years. So it's kind of a, uh, it's a great moment. There's a little bit of sadness too, of because course. you know, it's, you can, you, but you can't hold on to it forever. And we've got a couple of the girls who will continue their careers with uh, Lily Testa playing basketball next year at the University of Rochester. Sarah Carfagno, I didn't realize that, is gonna play soccer at Jackson State. So, uh, so that's exciting news. But again, we mentioned earlier, this is senior night, but before I write, we write a complete postscript on this. There are a few more games left. Two more this week. Uh, Red Devils will be at undefeated Gill on Thursday. And then Saturday they will finish up the regular season against Hillsborough. 
and I have not heard how the Skyland Conference seeding went, if it's been out yet. If it has, I haven't heard it. But there are three games guaranteed. Yeah. Central will certainly be one of the higher seeds. So I'm imagining they'll get at least one home game, possibly more. So there's still a lot of basketball to be played here. Uh, a little bit of basketball to be played here, but a lot more to be played by these girls. No doubt about that. 7-2, and two, the record now for 100 and Central. They have been playing extremely well all season long in this shortened season. And, of course, no one would have thought that we were going to have a season this year. There were some talks about just canceling everything, but luckily there is a season for 100 and Central. There was a few teams who had real issues with COVID and everything like that. But for 100 and Central, they really haven't had a problem, luckily, all season long. And they're able to play – Nine games so far on this young season. They look to continue with a couple more and into the playoffs. And they are playing extremely, extremely well at the right time. Yeah, it's, it's been a season, and, and all the kids in all the sports have been the same way. You always had to be prepared for your opponent, but also knowing that the game could be canceled uh, because of COVID on the day of the game. It's happened a couple times this year. So there had to be a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, flexibility and a lot of just awareness for the girls and boys here at Central as you just never know what the uh, the next moment brings. And we got the player, or the, the parents almost look like they're in shape, but I'm waiting for the cue to uh, to the public address voice of the Red Devils. That's Mr. Ben Strober. I see your athletic director, Jesse Spencer, over there kind of getting traffic in order. So they're bringing out the underclassmen, I think, are going to probably maybe make a little, uh, between the underclassmen and the coaches, make a little line for the girls as they come out triumphantly for the final time. Typically, our senior days here have been pregame, or on some occasions, I think it's been halftime. But again, this is uh, anything but yeah. normal this year. And so. Jim, Jim, there was also talks a few weeks ago. I remember sitting here with you when no parents were allowed in the field house at all. They were thinking about bringing them in and putting them in the cafeteria over to the left. But luckily, they are here tonight as we go to the public address announcer. Basketball team. Introducing now our class of 2021. We'll start out with number 25, Sarah Carfagno. Sarah's future, future plans are playing Division I soccer at Jackson State University and studying special education. Sarah's favorite pregame song is Money Longer by Lil Lucy. Once again, that was number 25, Sarah Carpenter. The next Red Devil senior is number 24, Isabella Bella Fratelli. Isabella is the captain. Her parents are Jen and PJ. Her future plans are to attend at St. Paul University studying physical therapy. Bella's favorite pregame song is Ain't No Mountain High Enough by Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell. Once again, that's number 24, Bella Crutelli. Next senior, Red Devils, number 33, Isabella DiGiovanni. Isabella will be led by her parents in the court, Dana and Bill. Isabella, Isabella is Isabel is undecided on where she plans on attending college, but is planning to study special ed in Spanish. Her favorite pretty name song is New York Groove by H. Free. Once again, number 33, Isabella Nijabai. Next red bell up is number 42, Savannah Savvy Grant. Savvy will be headed headquartered by her parents, Bonnie and Jean. Savvy's future plans include attending the Seton Hall University majoring in criminal justice. And once again, 
once again, that was number 42, Snappy Grant. Next Red Devil Senior is also a captain, number five, Mackenzie Mack Taylor. Mack is met by her parents, Patricia and Kevin. At the airport, of course, Mack is there first. Her future plans are most likely to attend the University of Maryland to study business. Hopefully Mac will be playing hoops there also. She's good enough. Once again, number five, Captain Mac, Mackenzie Taylor. Next Red Devil Senior is number 22, Emmy Nanda. Her future plan, she's undecided what college she'll be attending, but she, will, but she plans on studying criminology. Ooh, Once again, number 22 senior, Emmy Nanda. Next Red Devil Up is also her captain, number 23, Lily Testa. <laughs> Lily is met by her parents, Becky and Paul. Her future plans including, includes playing basketball at the University of Rochester. Her major is still undecided, but likely it will be biology with a minor in math, possibly pre-med track. Once again, that's her senior captain, number 23, Lily Testa. And those are your seniors. Once again, it's number 25, Sarah Carfagnell, number 24, Bella Gratelli, number 33, Isabel Di Giovanni, number 42, Savvy Grant, number 5, Mackenzie Mac Layler, number 22, Emmy Nanda, and number 23, Lily Testa. So Don, we'll take a look around and one last look at the seniors and their families. It's a special day. It's a little, uh, little surreal with only the parents and families. And there's a handful of other parents of the younger players here. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, it was a good way to go out uh, on senior night with this hard-fought win over Wachong Hills. 37-34 yeah, the final. Had to squeak it out at the end, but they ended up getting... The W, you know, it's always good to get a win on senior day. It might have been a little after a loss, but Hunter and Central able to get that coveted win over Wachong Hills. And there's seven of them, and as we mentioned before, uh, Lily Testa will continue on playing basketball at University of Rochester, and Sarah Carfagno will play soccer in college. And the other Red Devils will uh, continue along in their academic studies. Get a look a lot at, of seniors on the squad. Yep. Kenzie Laylor and her parents. Some photographers getting each one of them. And we'll join in on some of these final pictures. Some final sentiments. So Coach Jamie Bush has to be pretty happy with the way this season has gone, all things considered. A seven and two record right now with two regular season games and then three to four games in the playoffs. And uh, as we mentioned before, a lot of these seniors will be gone, but there's a lot of good talent coming up. Tabby DeVries, Lucy Alordo, of course, Jessica Mastriano, who was injured and didn't play today. So there's, uh, you know, there's still some good talent coming back for Hunter Central. And that will just about wrap up senior day 400 and Central girls basketball. Once again, the final score 37 34 with Hunter and Central getting the win over Wachung Hills. The Red Devils improved to 7 and 2 on the season, while the Warriors fall to 4 and 6, snapping their three game winning streak. Once again, we thank you for joining us here on HCTV alongside Jim Johnson. I am Dominic Capone. Thank you so much for joining us all year for 100 and Central girls basketball.